In this video I'm going to be analyzing the uh, mechanics and physics of player movement in something called Challenge Pro Mode, which is a, a mod that was originally for the game Quick 3. Um, CPM is, is fast paced and it's largely considered to be one of the hardest to move, uh, one of the hardest games to move well in. Um, and it's partially because it's based on acceleration and deceleration and abusing that instead of uh, velocity which uh, is interesting because it's a lot like real life uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into what I find to be probably the five core points of movement in this game and then I'm going to look at uh, the intuitiveness and skill potential that it offers and where it lies on that balance so I'm very quickly just going to give you all the points that I was talking about and then we'll go more in depth one by one. Uh, so the first one is that jumps use pogo stick logic. The second one is that air drag does not exist. Number three is that velocity is not capped and instead acceleration is. Four is that jumping multiple times within a short period causes the subsequent jumps to be 50% higher each time. And five external forces can affect a player's velocity. With pogo stick jumping, you can only jump once per input of the jump button. However, the input is not read when the button is pushed, but at the first valid time while the button is pushed. This means you can't hold the jump button to jump over and over, but you don't need to hit the button at the perfect time to get the perfect jump. You can just hold the button when you're about to hit the ground, and it will jump as soon as it can. Pogo stick jumping lets the player consistently do perfectly timed jumps, which effectively allows them to stay in the air permanently. This is pretty useful because air drag doesn't actually exist in this game. You only lose velocity if you run along the ground. The combination of pogo stick jumping and zero air drag means that you can maintain a constant speed by simply jumping. No other movement input is actually necessary. Speed is a major part of CPM, and being able to easily maintain it is important. If you can't maintain your speed, then you can't add to it. Building speed is rather complex and relies on manipulating the way that velocity and acceleration work. What you're currently seeing is a technique called strafe jumping, and I'll explain how it works in a moment. For now, just notice that my speed is steadily climbing far past the normal walking speed of 320 minutes per second. I'm going to try to explain what's happening here using some graphics. Here's a cross. Each notch in the cross represents 100 units. Now let's add some red lines to it. Each one of these lines represents a possible input that the player can give with their keyboard. Because this game uses a WASD controller scheme, it allows for 8 directional input. As you may have noticed, the normal walking speed in CPM is 320 units per second. However, velocity is clearly not capped at this number, so what is it exactly? Well, it's less of a maximum velocity and more of an acceleration limit. Whenever the player sends movement input to the game, it checks what their velocity in that direction is. If it's less than 320 units per second, then the game accelerates the player in that direction. Here is where it gets a little tricky though. We have to think about our red lines not as velocity, but as requests to the game for acceleration. Velocity must instead be represented by circles. By placing one side of the circle on our point of origin and the opposite side of the circle on the tip of our input, we gain a visual representation of our velocity. If someone were to draw a straight line from the point of origin to any point on the edge of our velocity circle, the length of that line would be our current velocity in the direction of that line. Therefore, if we requested acceleration so that our input lies outside of this velocity circle, the game would actually allow it and we would gain speed. Here's a demonstration of this concept in action. I'm using only my keyboard to move, and I'm pogo stick jumping while alternating my movement input left and right diagonally forward. The end result is that I slowly gain speed up to a maximum of 452 units per second. And here's the graphical representation of my input. Every jump I was alternating my input between the two velocities you see right now, with an end result of 452 units per second forward. Let's draw that circle now. You might notice that the circle intersects perfectly with our two diagonal red lines. This is no accident. Once our requested inputs no longer fall outside of our velocity circle, they no longer grant us acceleration. Thus, the lines will end exactly on the edge of our new velocity circle. 
Getting faster than 420 units per second is simple. We must simply request input that lies outside of our velocity circle. Doing this is as easy as moving your mouse so that your four diagonal inputs lie somewhere in the red area. With all of this in mind, let's look at strafe jumping again. Pay close attention to the input and mouse movements and the resulting speed increase. Notice that I hold forward the entire time and alternate holding left and right every jump. Notice that every time I change direction, I swing my mouse in the same direction, and every swing is larger than the last. I'm trying to get deeper and deeper into the red area with my input. That's the meat of CPM movement physics, but there's also a bit more to jumping than just pogo sticking to maintain speed. If you issue two valid jump commands in 400 milliseconds, the second jump will get 50% extra height. It doesn't matter how the second jump happens. You can jump on a low platform, then jump off it. You can jump into a portal and jump out the other side. You can even jump into a low hanging ceiling and jump again after you hit the floor. As long as a jump follows another by no more than 400 milliseconds, it will be a higher jump. There's also no limit to the amount of jumps that you can do either. Triple jumps aren't uncommon and will send you flying upwards. You might also notice our fifth and final point in action. The player is subject to force other than their own strafing and jumping. External forces such as jump pads, or other players shooting at you, or even shooting at yourself will have an effect on your velocity. These forces aren't subject to the acceleration limit that player movement is. If an acceleration force is applied to the player, they will simply gain that velocity in the direction that the force was applied. That concludes my brief analysis of CPM movement mechanics. Before I get into my theories and thoughts, I'd also like to make a special note about the context that the game takes place in. All of these points can exist in a world that is completely flat and infinitely big, but they wouldn't be very interesting or useful. It's the world that gives it context and meaning. The way a world is structured is crucial to how the beings that exist inside of it interact with it. I'm going to talk for a moment about the skill potential and intuitiveness of this game. First off, obviously I feel as though this game has a massive skill ceiling. That's to say, I find it hard to believe that anybody will ever move perfectly. If you compare it to a game like Flappy Birds, for example, you'll understand my point. The simplicity of the physics allows for complexity in their execution, and the nuances of this complexity mirrors the way that we exist in the physical world, which is a concept I'm trying to capture. However, this game is not intuitive. There is no obvious reason why moving side to side a certain way would increase your speed, nor is there satisfactory evidence that your input was simply okay rather than flawless. In a sense, the feedback is binary. Either you make a jump, or you don't. The high speed of the game, combined with the nature of virtual worlds, makes everything between success and total failure somewhat of a blur. At the end of the day, my goal is to build a system that can be analyzed and broken down in the same way I just analyzed TPM. I want to create a world that is defined by ground rules rather than a preset list of actions, and I want to emulate the skill potential of CPM as best I can. However, and maybe more importantly, I need to focus on keeping it intuitive. I want people of all walks of life to be able to have a rudimentary grasp of the world within seconds. CPM doesn't really do this, it must be studied and analyzed. The bottom line is that I don't want to create a world that must be studied, I want to create a world that can be studied.